last report of the guy on the bike, but I'm not on the bike today. We are on Randall's Island. And uh, we're gonna go in and visit the Freeze Art Fair 2019. I think this might be about the seventh or eighth, eighth iteration of this show that I've seen. Let's take a look. So it's a dank, drizzly Sunday afternoon. I uh, didn't even take the bicycle because I knew it was too miserable. Oh, this piece has been getting a lot of uh, press attention. This is Victoria Monroe, maybe. Please do not touch the artwork. Well, I uh, generally enjoy the Freeze Art Fair, mainly because it uh, gives me a chance to see a lot of work by international artists and uh, things from a lot of European galleries that I don't normally get a chance to see. I think also uh, Rashid Johnson. It's a chance to uh, see what's cooking in the market. This is the Richard Gray Gallery. I think uh, I first bumped into Rashid's work at Laura Hopman's show uh, painting in the Forever Now at uh, the Museum of Modern Art. Gee, at this point, that's about five years ago. This is oak flooring, black soap, wax, and spray enamel. And I'd say that that's probably about six by four feet. Let's uh, stroll through the gallery. I'm not... Uh, going to be able to capture all of the titles and descriptions because there are over a couple of hundred galleries here so we'll see if we can focus in on a couple of interesting things. This is by Jim Lutz. Born 1955. Things in my studio. 1998 to 2008, oil on canvas, 78 by 56. Uh, I think the other thing that's interesting about a show like this is also uh, you get a chance to see what's the, uh, the latest trends, fashions, uh, tropes that everyone is using. That's a big painting. I think that must be Alex Katz. Maybe, maybe not. Yes, Alex Katz. This is titled Grass. And this is 108 by 216 inches. That's a big painting. It's another big painting. Gosh, Jim Dine. The constant reminder of age and gender, 2016. Oil and acrylic on linen. 86 by 192. Okay, so we're talking about 7 by 18 feet, something like that. Uh, okay, gosh. Jim Dine is uh, doing some chunky stuff, and it kind of makes me uh, think about the uh, Cobra Painters. 
think the other thing that's uh, noteworthy is that in the last couple of years they've uh, redesigned the the pavilion here so they've got it broken down into various sections this is Massimo Di Carlo Milan London Hong Kong this is by Rob Pruitt titled mild uh, yeah one of the problems is they've got a uh, very uh, bad system of labeling the work, so you've got to read the label and then run to, down the wall about five pieces and try to memorize all this stuff. We're going to stay in uh, Section A for a while. This is Alice Neal, Martin Dennis, 1971, oil on canvas, 47 by 32. I think Alice has been getting a lot of uh, reevaluation these days. She was a uh, fantastic portrait artist. Okay, this is Hales, London. Frank Bowling, acrylic and collage on canvas. Also, Frank Bowling. Stewart's prediction acrylic on canvas, 58 by 106. Bernard Jacobson Gallery, London. Is that a Larry Bell glass box? Looks like it. Uh, well, this is interesting. We got a couple of uh, looks like mother wells. This is interesting. Just last month we saw a mother well show at Paul Kasman, which he was featuring his large pieces. I wonder if uh, this is part of a rediscovery of Robert Motherwell. Motherwell, untitled yeah. New England Elegy Number no. Five, yeah. 1987. Yeah. Well, I was uh, saying that it's not only interesting to come in and look at the new artists that the galleries and institutions are debuting, but it's also interesting to see the some of the past masters that they're bringing it back out of storage. Got some Matisse drawings. This is Larry Poon's painting. Titled Big Purple 1972. This is when uh, Larry was literally throwing buckets of paint onto his canvases. This is a smaller piece. Untitled. Yeah. 
another uh, interesting thing that's been happening is that uh, when you get a fair like this, they kind of try to branch out and become more egalitarian and we're going to keep our eyes open but I think they've got a uh, large section dedicated to the outsider artists and um, I think when the uh, the outsiders actually start breaking into the top line commercial fairs that it sort of says that the big market movers and shakers have decided that uh, they better take a second look there might be some some commerce to be done in that sector James Cohen New York Kavi Gupta Chicago Furilia Baez Interesting. I guess we've got, is that a digital, large digital print on canvas? It has then been uh, added to, painted over. Okay, well, about a month ago we went to Strategic Vandalism, a show that uh, was kind of riffing on Asker Yorn's modified paintings from the 60s and 70s. And I think this stuff kind of fits in the same category. I would say these are actually pretty big too. They're probably about by 10 feet, something like that. Salon 94. Luis Flores. Cecilia de Torres, New York. Marta Chilindron. So we've got a lot of uh, plexi sculpture. And uh, see, I like the way that uh, they've got these displayed so that you can walk around and really um, experience the way that the light passes through them and changes as you have one plane over the other. Very uh, cool synthetic colors. Engleby, Edinburgh. Looks like we've got an exhibition by Andrew Cranston. These pieces are wax and varnish on hardcover book covers. Well, I kind of came in and peeked at these and was thinking that this looked like uh, enamel. So, uh, yeah. lovely surfaces. Okay, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of resin in there. 
and I wonder how much of his uh, final painting is suggested by the uh, images on the cover. It'll make me think of a Vuillard. This is a major Copley painting here at the Paul Kasman Gallery. Women Copley, homage to W.C. Fields, 1975. And uh, we'll go around the corner here. And they've got a uh, <laughs> nice little mother well. And then they were all comments. So, okay, we've seen a couple of mother wells. Maybe he's one of the people they're rediscovering. I'm trying to go slow. I get a lot of people complaining that uh, <laughs> my fast camera action is making people seasick. This is by Jane Freelisher. Parts of the World 1987. Jane was a long time presence on the New York art scene, I think. Larry Rivers was her boyfriend back in the early mid 80s or 50s. And uh, Kasman recently had a show of her work that got a lot of critical attention about six months ago. Robert, Indiana. Love. Oh, this is a pretty nifty little piece. This is Roxy Payne. Maquette for the Checkpoint 2013 Maple Birch Fluorescent Lamps Glass. Roxy is quite a uh, technician. Forty-two by fifty-two by thirty-two. James Cohen, New York. Joshua McClinney, Untitled White. It's a pretty zippy painting. Okay. Federico Herrero. Hungry, 2019, oil and acrylic on canvas, 94 by 108. Okay, I started seeing Federico's work Maybe at Basel, Miami, about, uh, gosh, 16, 17 years ago. Fred Tomaselli, Untitled 2019, photo collage and acrylic and resin on wood panel 24 by 24. Uh, Fred is probably one of the best known of the Williamsburg artists, although he didn't really uh, make a point of kind of promoting that aspect of his, his practice, but uh, it's probably maybe a half dozen other artists that uh, were living and working in Williamsburg for the last 20, 25 years that kind of broke through. He was one of them, Chris Martin's one, Kathy Bradford. Uh, I think the other interesting thing is that Fred got a lot of his recognition by uh, 
embedding marijuana leaves and other kinds of pills and narcotics and things in his paintings and now that there's such a uh, trend towards legalizing all that stuff somehow the the work is not quite as trans transgressive I was looking at these and thinking they look kind of familiar. Well, he was a very well-known painter starting, I guess, in the late 40s out in California. I think he was part of a group of artists, kind of uh, back to nature. I think they might have even been the, you know, the illuminists or the transcendentalists or something, but uh, his son became a very well-known uh, artist in New York, kind of an ancillary figure within the uh, pictures generation, Matt Mulliken, and uh, these little dashes, I think, Lee used to use a uh, edge of a putty knife or a palette knife to add those little chops in there. Now we're in the, the S section. Got a huge red grooms. I think uh, go back in the files about six months ago, maybe a little more, and see a uh, red groom show at Marlboro. I saw a picture of Jerry Saltz. They actually let him go inside. Let's see if we can see what they've got inside here. I could have been like this. Okay. So this might be part of his Ruckus Manhattan project. And we just covered a show by Mimi Gross, who is his wife slash collaborator for about 20 years. Briefly, big boy. Okay. I wonder. I wonder for my. Oh, that's a nice little uh, grouping. Hollis Taggart. Okay, this is what, one of the reasons I came here. This is their one-person show of works by Knox Martin, who was my uh, painting instructor at the Art Students League about 40 years ago. It's untitled 1975, acrylic and graphite on paper. Woman with Folded Hands, 1973. Well, Knox was at the uh, opening, and Knox is 96 years old. Woman and Face, 1972, 89 by 73. You know, I'm looking at these paintings and thinking how fresh they look. I thought this was a really nice piece. Oh, David Humphrey. This is early, this is 1963. Garden of Time. 
Now, uh, as I was saying in the other part of the video, uh, Knox is quite an active member of the, the New York School. Uh, he studied at the Art Students League and then started teaching. And uh, while he was there at the Art Students League, he got to know Robert Rauschenberg. This is Bust of Woman, 1973. Carmen Seated. Acrylic and graphite on paper mounted on linen, 15 by 13. It's another beautiful piece from the this early 70s. Woman's face, green eyelids, blue nose, 1972, 85 by 60. Right, right. You know, some of his little paintings like this are just so beautiful. Reclining Woman, 1975. And he has such a uh, unique palette. Raspberry Breasts, 1970 acrylic and graphite on paper mounted on linen. It was so uh, wonderful to see him at the opening and he's still got uh, literally dozens and dozens of former students and fans that adore him. Garden of Time, 1976, Magnet Acrylic on Canvas, 98 by 125. Well, I learned a lot from Knox. I told him, I said, if there was one thing that he taught me that I never forgot was his line, hard against soft, thick against thin, curved against straight, and the shapes in between. So uh, whenever I hear somebody talking about the shapes in between, I think, uh, hey, these people are uh, Almost as smart as Knox. Thanks, Knox. Ronchini, London. Katsumi Nakai? Kei? Acrylic and oil on plywood. Well, Katsumi's got some uh, interesting ideas. Okay, so I'm looking at this and thinking these are all built like medieval folding altar pieces. All entitled acrylic on plywood from 1969. So great color sense. Uh, you know, there's some very uh, subtle things going on. Oh, that's great. You could take these paintings and uh, as you would fold them or unfold them, you could have like a different painting every day for a week. Oh, and also, uh, yeah, 
Look at somebody's paying attention to the edges. Acrylic on wood, 1972. Well, that was interesting. Well, we were talking about people to look for that might be uh, being rediscovered. This is. Gallery Javier Lopez and Fair Francis Madrid, and they've got the uh, cartoons from a bunch of Alex Katz paintings. His uh, studies that he, I believe, let's see. Yeah, he makes the drawings and then has a little perforation wheel that he runs over them and then he flounces them, I think that's what you call it, onto the canvas. Uh, this is actually very instructive. I've seen a couple of smaller examples of these works, but yeah, this is great to see a whole, whole bunch of these. I wonder what the uh, price range on some of these would be okay let's look at this one we can see the uh, the physical perforations here it's interesting to realize that he's still using this classic technique uh, but everybody I know would just use a projector. Sort of leave this step out. There's a real nice quality that these pieces have, kind of uh, fragile temporality. MCMC MC, Buenos Aires, Eduardo Costa. Of course, this piece got my caught my eye. We've got the uh, updated Duchamp bicycle wheel on a stool. Guess you can probably uh, flip a switch on here, and it'll start to spin somehow. a uh, couple of interesting pieces. Torsos of two brothers from Surf Guys, 1987. I enjoy pieces like this, you know, they're very sparse and then when they've been uh, aged for about uh, 30 years, you really uh, get a different kind of appreciation for them. George, Ad George Adams Gallery, New York, Joan Brown. Okay, this is a uh, Another great but tragic painter. She was, I think, part of the Bay Area figurative artists and also was uh, an inf influential early feminist artist and was dealing with uh, 
if bad painting, figurative painting, you know, women's art like uh, weaving and dressmaking and that kind of decorative things. And uh, I believe I used to see your work at the uh, Alan Frumkin Gallery. And uh, I think she was even a an Olympic swimmer or somebody that was dealing in long distance swimming competitions. Homage to Quetzalcoatl and Count the Waldlock 1983 oil and enamel on canvas. Anyway, at some point, Joan was working on a project in India and uh, I think it was a big architectural gate or some, some big thing and uh, she was involved in a uh, construction accident and uh, some huge thing fell on her and killed her. by Fred Eversley from 1984 at the David Kurdansky Gallery, Los Angeles. So this is uh, some of the uh, California light and space artists, the fetish finish artists. Yeah, the lensing effects of these are very intriguing. Everything looks smaller through the lens. Salon 91, Marina Adams. And I think that Marina's got a show up there right now. I think I caught her last show a couple of years ago. Well, that is some extremely punchy color. some more of Marina's small works on paper. Marina's Stanley Whitney's wife. And I would say that these are probably about uh, 14 by 12, maybe 16 by 12. Okay, we're moving on to the next section here. This is the Breeder Athens. Alexander Vasbolik. Malinkas, <laughs> heavy sleeper. Oh, I kind of like the uh, blown glass. Georgia Sagri breathing scores. Mm. 
more by Alexander Vosmolakis. And they don't have the uh, medium listed, but I think this looks like uh, maybe acrylic and oil stick. Angelo Polisas Homos New Spherics Well, I guess this is the main area and uh, boy, we better step on it because uh, see, it's only an hour and 20 minutes left Tanya Bonagdar, New York, Los Angeles. Mark Dion. Hunting pictures. Los Angeles. Gosh. We've got uh, Joseph Albers in bubble wrap. That's an interesting touch. Bernard Fries. Okay, that's uh, interesting. I'm wondering if that is straight spray paint or whether that was uh, some kind of uh, computer assisted something. Looks like it's straight spray paint. Spray paint. Murakami. Izumi Kato This is looks like burlap They're untitled. It's 
stone and acrylic. More Izumi Kato. Waddington, Custard, London. And Waddington is showing some prime American pop art here. Got Robert Indiana numbers and a whole bunch of Rauschenberg. titled New York Wall 1989 Magenta Plains galleries I pop into on Allen Street. El Bicho Muslimova. Peter Nagy, gosh, I haven't seen anything by him in about 15 years. One of the uh, kind of pictures generation conceptual painters. Butler, oil and acrylic on canvas. Tang Contemporary, Beijing, Hong Kong, Bangkok. This is an interesting homage to Jasper Johns. And uh, gosh, we got a uh, fuzzy painting here by Collage. Well, I say that I like chunky paint, and this could be some of the chunkiest chunky painting I've seen. This is by Ju Jinshu. Oil on canvas, 180 by 320 centimeters. Okay, this.
this is uh, yeah, that's a lot of oil paint. And uh, gosh, I wonder how much something like this weighs. I was also thinking that, uh, well, this probably will never dry. But I'm thinking it does look like it's mostly all oil paint. I can see the way that it's puckering. This, some people kind of fake this stuff up. I think the only other person that I know, the other only other artist that I know that does this kind of uh, heavy duty material work was the great Dutch Belgian artist Bram Bogart. I think he probably passed away about 10 years ago. Vigo, London. Derek Adams. So these look like um, collage and acrylic on paper. PPOW looks like we've got some kind of a performance piece going on. Okay. A small 10 bucks, medium 20 bucks, hardly anything else, 50 bucks. Okay. All right. I guess that says a lot about the current state of the art fair art market. Moran Moran, Brian Belot. It's like Los Angeles. I think I covered one of Brian's first shows at uh, Canada. Okay, I guess, yeah, I saw these pieces in a show and I was told that I had to go into the back because he had uh, art that was frozen <laughs> in beds of ice and I guess they use these to keep the refrigeration areas cool. Brian is a funny guy. Derek Eller Gallery. Okay, we were here at his Lower East Side space about a week ago. Covered a show by this artist, Peter. Linda Busk. <laughs> Gagosian. New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, London, Paris, Rome, Athens, Geneva, Hong Kong. We've got some John Chamberlain pieces. 
and uh, gosh, I think that must be a Steve Perino. Maybe, maybe not. Well, actually, that's uh, interesting. We've got a whole wall of Steve Perino pieces, mostly works on paper, I guess. And normally, you would see a painting like this is painted, unstretched, restretched, reconfigured, chopped up, sewn back together again, pieces. But it's, uh, it's enlightening to see the work on paper. Steve Perino, 2003, another tragic story. He, this was in Williamsburg going home from a New Year's Eve party or a Christmas party on his motorcycle and uh, hit a pothole. Strangely, there's a kind of uh, harmonic resonance between the Chamberlains and the uh, Perinos, kind of the uh, rumpled surfaces. This is a nice one. Although, uh, this looks like this one has been lacquered, which I guess in a certain way kind of uh, kills some of the uh, unique surface properties of some of these old oxidized car bodies. Perino with his silicon caulking gel. Daffod's Werner. Okay, I'm going to make a uh, vulgar editorial comment. Uh, I came in and saw this installation and thought, uh, yeah, this is uh, it's nice. We've got some uh, kind of pared down large paintings. It's a uh, New York school sized things and they're on the verge of abstraction. I've got this kind of uh, match head figure. A lot of interesting color things happening. A very pared down sparse compositions and uh, they're just so uh, Cool that they couldn't put any labels anywhere. Maybe I'm dumb. I just spent five minutes walking around looking for labels and uh, something to identify this. So uh, 
I guess I'm just not cool enough. I would, if I was cool, I would already know who this painter is. Lehman Malpin, New York, Hong Kong, Seoul. It's going to be a Larry Pittman. This is by Nari Ward, We the People, Arabic version, shoelaces. We've got another Nari Ward here, fire. Fredrickson Freiser, New York. Mark Thomas Gibson, The End, The Snowman, and A Cruel Ghoul of Fools. Like, who's afraid of red, yellow, and blue? Gina Gribben, Elizabeth working on poses for her Diana sculpture. John Wesley, Camel, 1966. Yeah, so I think John Wesley is probably one of the most interesting of the uh, eccentric pop artists. So we saw some examples of William Copley earlier in the production, but uh, John is in that same kind of interesting category, and I think he's... Is John still alive? Okay, so John is still alive, and he's 90. I know that uh, Don Judd was a fan of John's work and collected a certain amount of this and every now and then they bring it out and display it at the uh, the Judd Foundation down on it's Green Street Christina Di Miguel Got a little installation of work by Paul Mogensen. Paul was one of the uh, movers in the minimalist conceptual painting movement of the late 60s. 
Freeze will close in 30 minutes. Ay, ay, ay. Freeze will close in 30 minutes. Mitchell, Innocent, Nash. Jessica Stockholder. Oh. A large triptych by Kelty Ferris. I think I may have seen uh, snaps of this on Instagram. Wave Day 2018 oil and acrylic on canvas. Eighty by a hundred and eighty. So it's about. Six and a half by five feet each panel. Roberts Projects, LA. Ken Hinde Wiley, Charles, 2018 oil and linen, 96 by 72. Well, I was down in Washington around Thanksgiving and I did see uh, Ken Hinde's portrait of President Obama. is Jeffrey Gibson. Metal tingles. It should be nice to see or hear someone wearing the costume and you could hear all the bells ringing. William T. Williams, Michael Rosenfeld. Oh boy, this is a fantastic show of works on paper. I was just talking to Michael saying that uh, I was a big fan of Williams' work back in the early 70s. It's acrylic on paper. And, uh, well, I just love his colors, and he's got a fantastic sense of composition. And at that point, he was getting a lot of attention. And then I kind of uh, didn't see him around much for a few years. And then I think it was about... Uh, 12 or 13 years ago, I saw a major piece at the Museum of Modern Art in a show titled something like, What is Painting? And uh, I said, boy, where, where has William been? And then, thank God, somebody like Michael Rosenfeld has been working with him and promoting the work, getting the work out there, getting some attention for him. And it's, yeah. It's great to see all of these pieces are from 1970. Well, you know, they tried me, but I had taken my own But I had it on because I knew they were going to try Just 
seem to get better and better. So this is one of William T. Williams' major paintings. Sister of Neckbone, 1970 acrylic on canvas, 108 by 84 inches. And a very very wonderful color sense. This is another major painting. Yeah, I think this can compete with anything from a Frank Stella to an Al Held. Kenneth Nolan, Larry Poons, any of those guys. Hawks Return, 1969-1970, 109 by 84 inches. Okay, that's where we come to art fairs. Okay. Wow, I finally found it. The Doors of Perception, curated by Javier Tulis, a project in collaboration with the Outsider Art Fair. Well, this is what I was talking about when I said that uh, these fairs give you an opportunity to suss out what's happening in the contemporary art market. George Widner. Barbaro Rivas. Zanelli, Zanelli, Yanko Domisk. Well, we've probably seen most of these people at some of the other outsider art fairs. More George. This is great. They've got this uh, all covered with this gray felt and. Uh, Laid out like a maze. Okay. I'm not familiar with this cat. This is pretty interesting stuff. At one point I felt they had too much control because I couldn't figure out how a simple on-off button Ken Grimes. I like it. Okay, so I think we've got a lot of artists represented by Rico Moresca, Andrew Edlin, maybe Shrine. Oh my goodness. I should have come here first. Joseph Yoakum. One of the godfathers of the outside movement. Agatha Wojciechowski. Minnie Evans. Oh boy. Anna. 
Mankova, Henry Darger, Susan Tekarange King, well, one of my personal favorites. Novita Angispura Friedrich Schroeder Sonnenstern Wow and King. Not gonna lose any time on shutting this down. Thaddeus Ropak. Got a George Basilitz painting there, that's nice. Okay. James Calm reporting on the Freeze Art Fair 2019 in New York. You can like this, share, subscribe, recommend it to your friends. And you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. But we always appreciate it if you can say, thank you, Kate. Oh, thank you. That was nice.